a little bite, a little bite, but smooth, a little bite, but smooth, a little bite, but smooth. All right. So let's get into this reading. Let's get into this reading. So this particular chapter, which chapter is it? I don't even know what chapter this one is. Hold on. The law of cause and effect. So the law of cause and effect. And we're going to get into two. We're going to start off with this reading. And then I want to talk to you all a little bit about we started our book club over the weekend and we reviewed the first law, the 48 laws of power. So we're going to get into that as well. But let's start off with this. I think this is going to help us set our intentions for the week and make sure that we're starting off the week with a successful Monday. So awareness is key. The problem is that we are not always aware of our thinking patterns. And then we want to know how the situation ultimately happened to us. Screaming, why me? is a low vibration victim mentality. And if it is not controlled, it will continue to provide an experience that makes us feel victimized. Instead of why me, take a deep breath and ask a more empowering question. What did I do for this? Be honest with yourself when answering this question. When we take responsibility for our situation, instead of becoming their victims, we begin to see that we are not puppets. In fact, we are the puppet masters. It is about taking responsibility for your life and being aware of aligning your thoughts and actions with the results you seek to achieve. Advice. Look at your life and see how your intentions, thoughts, and actions contribute to what you experience. Next time, seize the opportunity to make a better decision and then watch those negative situations turn into positive ones. One of the simplest laws in the universe, the law of cause and effect, tells us that all actions have corresponding reactions. Of course, you know this when it comes to the physical aspects of the world. However, you may not have considered how this law applies to the spiritual aspect of our universe. Your spiritual life affects the world around you, causing positive or negative reactions. Likewise, your physical environment affects your spirituality for better or for worse. Ask yourself what kind of relationship you see between the spiritual and physical aspects and how you might want to change them. Same same thing that we always talk about, right? Same thing that we always talk about. And the main thing that I highlighted, as you can see, It is about taking responsibility for your life and being aware of aligning your thoughts and actions with the results you seek to achieve. And this goes on to have the uh, this kind of touches on the conversation that we had last week when we were talking about most of us are aware of the law of attraction. Most of us are aware aware of the law of attraction. We give off a certain certain energy. We're going to attract a certain energy. If we're mean, we're going to attract meanness. If we are healthy, we're going to attract healthy people around us, healthy opportunities, whatever that may be. But when you add in the actions aspect to it, that's when things start taking, in my opinion, you start taking things to another level. It's one thing to just have thoughts and dreams. But when your thoughts are consistent with the actions, in my opinion, that elevates everything, elevates all the energy that we're now putting out to the universe to now receive those effects that are being caused by our thoughts and everything that fits in that cause category. So y'all take it or leave it. 12 laws of the universe. In my opinion, I would definitely uh, tap into that. Those 12 laws, like I said, it's a pamphlet. You can read the book in about a day. Um, It's about 80 page pamphlet. I recommend it. We always focus on just the law of attraction, but sometimes we leave out a lot of the other laws that are going to play a role in whether or not we are successful or not. So let's get it. Let's keep going. Um, are y'all familiar with the 48 laws of power? Hold. On. I know we've touched on it before. Are y'all familiar with the 48 laws of power? And apparently this book is banned in prisons. I did not know that. I guess because it, apparently is a book of manipulation and teaches you how to manipulate people. And then I guess we have to ask ourselves, what's the difference between manipulation and influence? Um, In my opinion, when you're manipulating somebody, at least when I feel manipulated, it's being taken advantage of for an outcome that benefits you that doesn't take my benefits into account. It benefits you at my expense where influence can be, you know, anything on that spectrum, but manipulation, I would say, is a aspect of influence. So when we're looking at the 48 laws of power, I looked at it and I started reading this book maybe years ago. Literally, I can remember Mashir uh, giving me the book maybe, I think I was 2012 or 2013. And I read some of it over the years, but never got 
through the entire book. So I decided to, you know, restart it. And Amir and I, we were going over the first law. The first law is never outshine the master. And I'm going to connect this to father's fatherhood. And in the next segment, we're going to give a happy Father's Day. So bear with me. I know you see that I'm 